Bryn Carstens. The internet has always been, and always will be, a magic box. This quote was said by Mark Anderson, the creator of the web's very first online browser, Mosaic. Everyone in this room has used the internet for many different purposes, including research in this course. The Federal Communications Commission should reverse the repeal of net neutrality law. First, I will talk to you about the solutions, about the problems surrounding the repeal. And finally, I will talk to you about some solutions to this issue. Let's take a look at net neutrality. There are many problems surrounding the repeal of net neutrality rules. But before we get into that, let's make sure that everyone in here knows what it actually is. Shane Greenstein, a business administration professor from Harvard, in the Journal of Economic Perspectives, published in 2016, states that the term network neutrality was first introduced in 2003. The basic premise of this principle is a free internet for all. This means that no matter what company you go through, you are ensured access to the entire internet. No websites are blocked, you pay one bill for your internet, and there are no blocks on what you can see. This is very important in our society, and this is the base of network neutrality. Just last year, former Verizon lawyer Ajit Pai, who is the chairman of the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, introduced a resolution that would end the current laws on net neutrality as we know them. This resolution was very unpopular with voters, and people all over the country, including myself, sprang into action, calling, donating, writing, and protesting for the cause. This did not deter the chairman, however, and his resolution passed in a very close vote of three to two. This will cause many problems for us as consumers. Amy McGinn, an employee for the Loyola School of Ed Education's Educational Technology Program, says in the Baltimore Sun, published in 2017, that ISPs, or internet service providers, are now free to block your access to content or speed up or slow down access to different websites, thereby creating internet fast lanes. And you can also be forced to pay a fee in order to access these blocked websites. This is a major problem for us as citizens. There are many implications springing from this event, and the effects will be felt by many different people across our nation. Shant Sahakian, a member, a member of the Glendale District School Board, published in the Washington Post in 2015 that students, us, will be among those feeling the biggest effects of this shift in rules. It is no secret that our schools are changing. Technology has slowly become integrated into our curriculum today. Those of us in this classroom experience this shift firsthand, from paper and pencil to Chromebooks and iPads. Teachers and students deserve to use the best tools available for learning both inside and outside the classroom. And high-speed, high-quality internet should not be a luxury just, just to those districts who can afford it. In addition, this is also bad for businesses in our economy. According to Larry Downs, who was published in the Washington Post in 2015, he says that net neutrality ensures an equal platform for our business competition. This, without net neutrality, businesses and startup websites can be forced to pay fees in order for their content to reach the global internet community. And this will stifle entrepreneurship if these smaller websites are unable to pay such bills. According to Axel Gautier, a professor, an economics professor at the University of Liege, published in the International Journal of Industrial Organizations in 2017, says that without such open contest as we have enjoyed before, large companies like Apple or popular websites like Facebook would not have enjoyed the growth that they did in the 2000s. Now that I've explained a couple of problems surrounding this repeal, let's move on to some workable solutions. There are two realistic and effective solutions that go hand in hand in solving this issue. Our own Congress has the power to overturn the FCC's decision. One of the powers that our Congress has is to enact a law known as the Congressional Review Act. The Congressional Review Act law was first created in 1996. It gives Congress the power to disapprove of regulatory rules set by government agencies such as the FCC. In order for this law to be enacted, 
a disapproval resolution of those regulations must be submitted by either a representative of the House or the Senate. This bill must pass both chambers and be signed by the President before it can be put into action. If this passes, then this will effectively null the FCC's decision throughout the United States, keeping our, bat our battle for the net intact and keeping net neutrality safe. However, if the deadline for the Congressional Review passes, that's not the end of the discussion for the battle of the net. One of the other things that states have is the individual right to fight back. Members of our legislation have already introduced bills that would keep the basic principles of net neutrality intact in their respective states. Over half of the states have introduced such legislation. And of these states, California, Oregon, and Vermont are currently the only ones to have passed. But many are pending in other states as well. These two solutions are both effective and realistic in solving this issue. First, I told you about the problems surrounding the repeal. And finally, I told you of two realistic solutions to this problem. In conclusion, the FCC should reverse the repeal of net neutrality laws. The internet should remain like a magic box, limitless, full, fun, and available to the masses.